All right, so you clicked on this video because you wanna walk through the entire DJI Avada menu settings within the DJI goggles, and that's what we're gonna do here in this video. We'll go through all the different sections, menus, and settings to help you understand what these settings do and the best way to set up your Avada. I say the best way to set it up because it's the best way for me. You're gonna see the settings that I use here on this drone on the daily, but just know that some of them could be personal preference based, so therefore, you might wanna make some changes as you get more comfortable with the drone. Okay, so. So let's throw these goggles on, make sure we're recording everywhere. We should be good. I know I look crazy talking to you guys with these goggles on, but we've got to do what we got to do. All right, so here is our main screen. This is what we see, the live feed of the drone as we're flying around. It's the first screen we see when we boot these goggles up. So of course I move my hand and you can see it there. Now from here in the bottom left corner, we have our telemetry and the flight mode that we're currently in. So right now we're in the normal mode and then you can also see your vertical horizontal speed as well as the height and distance away your drone is from the remote controller. Now in the bottom right corner, it shows up so shows us some more status indicators as related to our Vada here. So first of all, we have the status of our drone which currently is in the low power state. So it limits your CPU usage so that it doesn't overheat and also so that it doesn't drain unnecessary power while just sitting there on the ground as you get all set up. Now also down there in the bottom right corner is the battery life remaining displayed as a percentage as well as the flight time remaining based on your current flight style. So you'll see that fluctuate up and down depending on if you're going easy or hard on the throttle. Now next to that, we can see the connection strength between the goggles, the drone, and the remote controller, and you have two separate signals. So one signal going from the drone to the goggles, and one going from the drone to the controller, and it shows both of those there kind of up, up, um, up on top of each other. So you've got the RC on the top out of four bars, and you've got the live view back to your goggles here, again, out of four bars. And just know that your live feed on the goggles here is going to go much sooner than the feed going back to your drone remote controller. So this connection between the goggles and drone is more susceptible to break up because you're transmitting a much higher fidelity signal. But when you're just transmitting from the controller, just know that you're gonna have more range. So if you get in a situation where you're starting to lose signal, you're starting to get a little breakup in your goggles, you can just punch up and out because that signal strength coming from the controller is nice and strong. Now next to that we have our bit rate. This is the bit rate of the video feed coming from the camera on the Avada back to our goggles here. Right now we're at seven megabits per second, but we can top out at 50 megabits per second. Right now we're in again that low power state, so it's limiting the transmission from the drone here. But just know that 50 megabits per second is gonna give you a nice clean video feed. And that's another good way to gauge like if you're starting to lose signal. So if you see that number go from 50 down to 45, 35, 25, then you're gonna start to lose signal and that might be a good idea, like a good way to understand that you've got to come back. So definitely keep an eye on not only the bit rate, but also like that connection strength and you're never going to lose signal like I did out in Vegas, but we won't touch on that too much. So next to that, we have our um, satellites connected to the drone. Right now we're at zero because we're inside under the roof, but once we get outside and establish those satellites, that's going to allow us to connect to our home point, use the GPS features like position hold. So you're definitely gonna make sure that you have good satellites so that you can rely on those GPS features in case you need to, like of course return to home if you lose connection. The final thing down there in the bottom right corner is the battery life remaining on our goggles, which right now is 33%. So all of that down there in the bottom right is like the most important status stuff that we need to know about our drone. But for the most part, this live feed and is nice and clean. And that's a good thing because you don't want too much junking up the screen and getting in the way of actually flying the drone. The final thing I guess I'll mention is in the top right corner, we have the record time on our goggles here as well as on the drone. But right now we're just recording to the goggles for the sake of this video. Okay, so from here we have three different sub menus that we can go to, the first of which we swipe down. This brings us to some of our quick settings, like the ability to start and stop recording. We can also lock or unlock the um, touchpad here on the side. We can enhance our display, which kind of just like boosts the contrast. Honestly, I prefer to fly with no enhanced display, so keep that turned off, but you can kind of see what works best for you and your eyes. We can also, oops, we can also enable the head tracking if we wanted to from here as we're flying with, say, the motion controller. We can adjust our brightness here, and then we can also adjust the volume. Now, swiping up instead of down brings us to the exposure settings for our camera, like the ability to switch between automatic and manual. We can also change the ISO, the shutter, the exposure value, the white balance, and if you wanted to, you could uh, 
take pictures with your Avada, although I doubt anybody's going to want to do that. So down there is our exposure settings. Now, the final menu section, and obviously the largest, is if we swipe kind of like forwards on our head, but if we swipe to the right, it brings us to our menu section here with the ability to go to see the status, the album, the transmission, the settings, and then we can go to more. I'm going to adjust my diopters a little bit here so that I can see a little bit better. There we are. Nice and clear. Okay, so up at the top here, we have our status. When we tap on there, it just gives us like a running log of all the notifications that have come to the Avada during our flight. So of course, right now we're in that low power state. So it'll show us there within that notifications menu. And we can also go up here to switch and switch between aircraft. Although currently these goggles, the V2 goggles are only available to be used with the Avada. It's not compatible with any other drone. So I think that this is kind of like a... a uh, something to, to look for because this could potentially be compatible with other drones and you can switch between them here under the aircraft and this is almost like a telltale sign that it's going to open that up it's almost like a little easter egg but yeah for right now really doesn't have much of a function and also to go back by the way i'm just kind of swiping backwards on the display here and it brings me to the back menu or the the last menu that i was on now, underneath of our status, we have the album, which right now I'm not able to access because we're recording from the goggles. But when we go inside of our album, it allows us to see, like, um, you know, some of the different flights that we've taken. So it shows us what's on the SD card here on the goggles. So it allows us to look back at flights, review shots, maybe check out where we lost our drone if we crashed it. So the album shows us everything on the SD card plugged into the goggles here. Swiping down to transmission. We've got two different subsections. We've got the pilot and the audience section. Under pilot, we can choose whether we want to broadcast our signals to others so they can come along and fly with us and connect their goggles to our drone. I'm going to leave it off right now because I don't want to like mess up the screen recording. But if you want others to ride along with you, you can go ahead and set your broadcasting mode to on and let them connect to your drone. Focus mode here is interesting. I have this set to automatic. So basically with focus mode, as you're flying around and if you start to lose signal, it's going to actually degrade the outside of the frame before doing anything to the middle. So the middle of your frame stays clear while the outside starts to break up. So focus mode is great if you want to be able to like punch out of those scenarios where you're starting to lose signal or you can just turn that off and then the whole entire frame will kind of go and start to lose signal all at once. But again, focus mode gives you the ability to have a better chance if you're cutting through signal breakup to get through that signal breakup and out to safety. Now you can also go to your channel mode and like select a manual channel channel if you want, which I guess could be good if you're flying with a bunch of different people so that there's no interference. But personally, I leave this on auto and just let the drone do the work for me. And the final thing in here is if we go over to audience, you can just kind of select the goggles or the drone that you want to connect to. So if you're going to be someone that is, um, you know, following along with somebody you want to connect to their drone, have them turn on broadcast mode, then go to audience. And from here, you can select their drone. Now, moving on from here, we will swipe back and go down to our settings section and this is by far the largest section the largest menu area of things that we have to change we've got safety control camera display and about so we'll kick things off with safety up here at the top it's a lot of fairly basic things like our max flight altitude so this allows us to choose how high we can fly our drone to before it like hits almost like a virtual wall which i've got mine set to 394 of course that limit is 400 feet here in the states but you can go all the way up to 1640 which could be useful if you're like going up the side of a mountain and it's higher than 400 feet. So you can go and change that to 1640 if you say you need that extra um, height. You can also choose a max flight distance. So rather than limiting your altitude, it'll limit how far you can fly from the drone. Again, giving you like a virtual fence. I've got mindset to no limit because I don't want to be, you know, bothered by say trying to fly and chase after a train and then, oh, you know, I, I bump into my limit and I can't fly any further. But this could be good to turn off if you're just getting used to flying the drone so you don't get it too far away from you. So if you're just picking up your Vada, maybe set your distance limit here to like say, I don't know, maybe go a little bit further, like half a mile or something, kind of as just like a, a limit so that you don't get too far away and get too ahead of yourself. But again, for me, I like to just leave it off because I kind of hate that restriction. Also, Moving on down here, you've got your return to home altitude, which mine is right now set to 98 feet. You can go all the way to 328. So basically your RTH altitude allows you to set the height that your drone will fly to and come back to you at. So the way that RTH works is like if you lose signal, the drone will fly up to the specified altitude, which I have set to 98 feet. So if I'm at 60 feet, the drone flies up to 98 feet and then will fly straight back to me. Or if I set it to say 328 here, the drone will say lose connection at you know 120 feet. It'll then fly up to 328, spin around, and then fly back to me.
Now, continuing on with our home point here, we can update the home point if we need to. So this is good for like if you're moving locations and your drone is still in the air, you can update your home point where you're located at. So the drone doesn't fly to your old home point and comes back to the new one that you've updated. And that just kind of connects to like where your remote is. So where you're currently standing, you can set the home point to that location. Now, moving down here, you can also select um, or you can also view the status of the sensors inside of your drone as well as your goggles here. So you've got your aircraft compass, your IMU, um, your aircraft IMU your goggles compass and your goggles IMU. So from here, you can examine the status of these different components and also calibrate them if you need to. Now, before we move into the rest of the menu settings here, I wanna give a quick shout out to this video's sponsor, Surfshark. Surfshark is a VPN that keeps your digital life safe from companies and individuals that might want to use your data in a harmful way. It's really easy for information about what you do online to be tracked and stored, but Surfshark puts a stop to this through encryption and modern VPN protocols. One of the benefits to using a VPN like Surfshark is the ability to access as content and websites blocked in certain countries, like connecting to Netflix and browsing the shows and movies that might be available in other regions than where you're currently located. By changing your IP address, you can access the internet as if you're located anywhere in the world, further protecting your location. With Surfshark's suite of features like GPS spoofing on Android, 100% RAM only servers, 24 seven support, and so much more, you can guarantee that your time spent online will be more enjoyable without having to worry about your information being viewed and stored. So a special thanks to Surfshark for sponsoring this video, be sure to check out the link in the description and use code Billy Kyle for 83% off if you want to get serious about your safety online. Okay, back inside of the goggles and onto the video. Now, the next two things here on this section under safety camera view before loss and ESC beeping will come in handy if you plan on crashing your drone. Well, I guess nobody plans on it, but if you end up crashing your drone, you can go up to camera view before loss and actually see the view from your goggles right before you lose signal, even if you don't have a SD card plugged in. So if you crash your drone and you lose it, come here under safety, go to camera view, camera view before loss, and it shows you where your drone crashed just before you lose that signal. So that is a very handy feature. And if you get around to where you think that it is, you can turn on ESC beeping. I will turn it on here really quickly. It basically has the drone ESCs beep so that if you're in the general area of where you think the drone is, you can turn that on, the drone beeps, and then you can pinpoint where it's at. This would have been super helpful for me if I was trying to find my drone out in Vegas, but of course the battery popped out, so therefore I wasn't able to use it because I didn't have any power to the drone, which made it a lot harder, but this will help you find the drone a lot easier if you're kind of like in the general area and you just can't find exactly where it's at. Now moving on here, we have our advanced safety settings, so we can choose what happens when the drone loses signal. So you can choose from return to home, land, or hover. Now, with most of my GPS drones, I pretty much always have it set to return to home because if I lose connection, I want the drone to just come back to me where I'm sitting at. But I've actually gone and changed my Avada here quite a couple of times to hover because I might be flying inside going through, say, a warehouse or going through a building with the Avada. And I don't want the drone to return to home if I lose signal because it'll fly up, hit the ceiling and fall down to the ground. I'd much rather it just hover there. And I also don't really want it to land because I might be flying over a piece of equipment. It might lose signal and then try to land on top of that piece of equipment. So I'd rather hover, sit there in place until I can get back and figure out like what I'm going to do, whether I want to land it or whether I want to restart. So being able to switch this is nice depending on the flight and just make sure that if you say are flying inside and you said it's a hover, you don't go outside and then forget to change it back to return to home because I've done that before and you lose signal and the drone will just hover there thinking, hey, I'm going to hover here and wait until I regain signal rather than return to home and you're outside. You might be really far away. So make sure you switch this depending on what type of flight you're doing. Now we also have AirSense in here, so you can turn this on or off. AirSense basically just allows you to be notified when nearby uh, planes and nearby manned aircraft are emitting that ADS-B signal. So you can hear a little beep in your goggles when someone is close by. That's just a nice little added layer of protection. And also you can turn on your emergency propeller stop. So if you're in the air, you can do like a specific stick movement. So the propeller stop, no matter what, in case of an emergency. So usually I'm not wearing these goggles for this extended period of time, trying to talk through these settings. And man, they are becoming fatiguing. I really wish DJ would come out with that new upgraded phone. But all right, going back inside here, we can finish up with our safety. Uh, yeah, that's all we've got in safety. So let's go back to our control. So we've got two different options here. We've got the remote controller and the motion co controller to pilot the Avada. So right now I've got the remote controller selected. And when we go into our remote controller settings, we can choose some of the different custom button um, settings here. So the C1 button towards the front side of the drone here, we can choose what happens if we do a single press or a double press. I've got mine set to ESC beep if I single press and then go into turtle mode if I double press. Um, and then you've got the back C2 button that kind of has three different tiers 
the top, the mid, and the bottom button. And I just have this set to flip my gimbal up, down, or recenter. And this gives me a good way to kind of get oriented if I'm hovering in a spot. I can quickly look up, down, and then back to the center and make sure that I'm not near anything. And finally, my custom button on the back here, which I don't even know where my controller is, but the custom button on the backside of the remote is set to manual mode so that I can flip into manual and fly in acro if I wanted. Now, moving on here to the stick mode, I've got mine set to the default of mode two. I've been flying mode two since I first started flying drones like six years ago. So mode two is what I go with. But again, you can kind of feel this out and feel what what, what is going to be most comfortable for you. But I'd probably start out on mode two because that's the default. Um, Moving on here, we have our gain and expo settings. So these are the rates that I use, super slow, super smooth, super cinematic, I guess you can say cinematic Avada settings. But these are the rates that I use. This controls the sensitivity of your sticks based on the input uh, to your Avada here. So you can kind of mess around with these, feel what works best for you. This is what I used on the DJI FPV drone. And then I just kind of translated that over to the Avada. I've kind of played with them here and there, but I feel comfortable with what I have here. Um, and then the final thing here is just the RC calibration. So if you've got an error, you can calibrate your RC here. So let's go ahead and jump back. <laughs> Come on, jump back. There we are. Now within here, um, you know what? I'll turn off my remote controller really quickly because we do have another subsection here for the motion controller. I'm kind of just showing you just because I want this video to be complete and I don't want, oops, because I want the video to be, to be complete and I don't want to kind of miss anything here. But the motion controller settings are very basic. Um, there really isn't all that much to change. So let's see, connects here. We'll jump down, uh, motion controller error, nice. Jump down to motion controller here. And basically all we can do is watch the tutorial and then calibrate the sensors on board. So that's pretty much all that we have. Really not all that much to change on the motion controller. But again, like if you're gonna be using this, it's good to be familiar with that because this does now ship with the Avada. So a lot more people will be flying with the motion controller. Okay, so those are the motion controller settings. Now jumping down here, we can adjust our gimbal pitch speed. Unlike GPS drones, we don't have like a finite uh, option to choose the degree, the degrees per second. We can only choose between slow, normal, and fast. So you can choose how fast that gimbal pitches up and down. You can also do a gimbal calibration here if you're experiencing any issues. You can change your units based on where you're located and what you prefer between, of course, imperial and metric. You can also invert the horizontal swipe on the touchpad here, although I'm gonna leave it be. And we also have turtle mode, which I guess I'll try, right? I'll do a quick little turtle mode, uh, I guess, test here. So if the drone is crashed and if we lose it, say, out in a field, we can enable turtle mode, which I actually have set on my controller to double press the C1 button as a just in case it's nice and quick. But you can also do it in the menu settings here. So we can select turtle mode. It will then fire up. Maybe it's not going to work because it's in the low power state. Okay, it's not working when I'm tapping on here. Maybe if I double press. Oh, the double press is the ESC beeping maybe. <laughs> I, I, here I am. Single press? No, that's not it. Okay, so um, turn off ESC beeping. Turtle mode, basically what it does is it spins up two of your propellers. Oh, you know why it's not working? Turtle mode, duh, because I need to flip the drone upside down. Okay, drone flipped upside down. Now we'll do turtle mode. Turtle mode. Yeah, there we are. And then it flips over. So that's good for like if you crash your drone and you don't want to go and pick the drone up, right? You're able to just do a quick little turtle mode flip there and then continue to fly, which is nice. It works out a good amount of the time. Impact detected. Nice. Okay, so the final thing we have here, here in control is our goggles tutorial. So we can jump into that section and go through the tutorial if we need to. But that pretty much wraps up the control section here. Let's jump back and we'll go down to the camera. Now, because we are currently doing a recording in the goggles, we really can't change anything in here. Everything is grayed out, but we have our aspect ratio. We can choose between 16 by nine and four by three. We've got video quality, which I set to 4K at 60 because I want the highest resolution at a nice smooth frame rate, especially when flying FPV. So I'm at 4K 60 basically all the time when I fly. My camera field of view is set to ultra wide. So that is the widest field of view, the full 155 degree field of view here of the camera. You can also use the wide field of view and then combine that with the gyro data and import that to gyro flow to kind of smooth out your video if you don't want to use Rocksteady. But personally, with the EIS settings, I turn Rocksteady on so that I can get a nice wide field of view and a nice smooth video. It just across the board looks the smoothest, at least in my opinion. But sometimes ultra wide can seem a little bit too too wide. So I do kind of play around with that based on what I'm shooting and where I'm at. Now my auto ISO limit here I have set to 1600. This can go all the way up to 6400, but I'd much rather keep it at 1600 because I notice this camera gets a little bit noisy. Like if you look up here kind of into this darker hallway, 
you kind of see that there's a little bit of noise popping in there. And if you're going to be doing flights where you fly from the outside and you come inside, you don't want it to jack the ISO up to say 6,400 and still have some room to kind of adjust the exposure with the shutter speed. So I usually um, limit my ISO to 1,600 to 3,200. I try to just stay away from 6,400 at all costs. Now, grid lines. This is something that I use on GPS drones because it helps me frame up shots. Let's see, I'll turn them on really quickly. We'll turn on the grid lines uh, and then we'll go back to the main screen. So you see you have these lines now across the live feed. Personally, again, great for GPS drones, but I do not like flying with these on as I'm flying FPV because sometimes it like scares me and I think that it's a wire or I think it's something I might hit. So you really don't need to be framing your shot rule of third style, you know, using these different, um, these different diagonal lines. So typically on an FPV drone, I'll turn these off. Uh, let's see, go down the camera. I'll turn these off just because I find them super annoying in the goggles. So turn those off. Now, center point I leave on, I leave on because it gives me that point right in the middle of the screen and it kind of helps me guide the drone and hit little gaps if I want to. So that's super helpful. We also can change the storage mode. So right now we can record to the SD card in the drone, wherever it's at. So we're recording to the SD card or we can choose to record to the internal storage. It's about 20 gigs and it's good for like those times where you might accidentally uh, forget to put an SD card in. So it's good to use as sort of like a backup. Um, you can also format your storage. Of course, we're recording, so we can't format right now, but you can choose to format the goggles SD card, the SD card on the drone, or the internal storage. You also have your advanced camera settings here. So we can choose to record with the goggles, the camera on the drone, or both. So you can kind of choose, like, when I hit record, do I want to just record on the goggles? Do I want to just record on the drone or record with both? I have mine set usually to both for this specific use case. Right now, I've got mine set to goggles because we're just kind of talking here. I don't want to record on the drone itself. But what's great is that that when you record from both of them, it just automatically does it. And that's why I have auto record on takeoff turned on. So with this turned on, as soon as I prime my motors, the drone starts recording. So therefore I don't have any flights where I accidentally forget to hit record. That's super helpful, especially with FPV. Um, you can also choose your color settings here. So I've got mine set to normal because it looks great right out of the gate. Those are the color settings of like what the camera here looks like. You've also got anti-flicker, which will adjust the uh, flicker or the Hertz within the, the, uh, the drone so that it will not flicker your lights as you fly through, say, a house or a building or if you fly down a street. So I just leave this at to auto, let the drone do the thing for me, and then leave video, sub video subtitles uh, turned off there. Now we are chugging along pretty good here. Let's go back to our camera settings. The final thing is just reset the camera parameter. So that's just kind of a general reset. And let's see, from here, the drone wants to turn off now. From here, I think we're pretty much done. I mean, the display here, you can change the brightness of the display. You can change the scaling of the display. So kind of like as you, uh, uh, if you want to, you can move the display inwards on the screen so that it's not taking up the whole screen. And that could be good like if you wanna centralize your view on a smaller screen so you're not darting your eyes all around the uh, goggles here. So you can kind of move the scale of the entire screen down in the goggles. And you can also display the virtual home point there on the screen uh, so that you know you always know where to fly back to. If you fly the Avada, you'll see that display there as an augmented reality point. And hey, look, that's perfect. We pretty much run out of time. I think that that's pretty much it because the display is done. About just kind of shows you like the serial number and stuff like that. I'm not going to go into the about section because I don't want to give away the serial number of my drone. And under more, we just have the ability to go to DJI Virtual Flight and wireless streaming. So that's it. Feels so good to take off those goggles. I probably have like the worst goggles line here on my face, but regardless, those are all the settings here within the DJI Avada. Let me stop that recording there within the goggles just so that I don't lose that. So we'll swipe down, stop the recording. There we go. So that pretty much wraps up everything that you need to know about the DJI Avada settings and menus here. Hopefully you guys learned something as we walk through the settings available for this drone. And hopefully you're able to learn something based on the settings that I use here. I know that this is probably a fairly long video. So thank you for sticking out with me. But again, hopefully you can take this knowledge on with you to next Avada flight and have a better flight with your drone. Anyway, thank you guys for watching, and as always, I'll talk to you later. Peace.